Hello everybody, this is Mika Seppälä. In this lecture I discuss one-sided limits and a formal definition of limits. One-sided limits and formal definitions. Consider the function whose graph is the blue curve shown in the picture on the left. At the point where the red vertical line intersects x-axis, that function does not have a limit. However, it has one-sided limits. If we approach that point from the right, then the values of the function seem to approach zero, and if we approach that point from the left, the values of the function approach positive infinity. These one-sided limits tell us about the behavior of functions uh, and are therefore important. We also discuss next formal definitions of limits and we saw an important result stating that if uh, the limit of a function is positive at some point x0 then near that point x0 the function takes positive values. It may take a negative value at the point x0 itself, but near the point x0 it must take positive values. This is perhaps the most important result of this presentation. Limits rigorously. We have previously defined limits by saying that the limit of a function f at a point x0 is a number l. If the values of the function f get arbitrarily close to l, as x gets close to x0, but is not x0. A precise mathematical definition for this is the following. Limit as x approaches x0 of the function f of x equals l, if and only if, for every positive number epsilon, we may always find a positive number delta such that whenever the absolute value of x minus x0 is between 0 and delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Here we do not allow that x equals x0, therefore the requirement is that 0 less than the absolute value of x minus x0 less than delta. Alright, let's take a look at how this formal definition can be used to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared equals 1. To prove this, we start by saying let epsilon be a positive number. Then we look at the difference 1 divided by 1 plus x squared minus 1. Its absolute value is the same as the absolute value of minus x squared divided by 1 plus x squared. Here we have simply combined the expressions within the absolute value sign. Now, regardless what x is, x squared is always non-negative, therefore this quantity is always at most x squared. So we get this estimate by replacing the denominator 1 plus x squared by its lower limit, which is 1. If the denominator gets smaller, then this positive expression gets larger. And the absolute value of negative x squared is of course same as x squared. And now this has to be less than epsilon, and uh, this is less than epsilon if x is less than square root of epsilon, which can be taken to be our number delta. Hence, for all positive numbers epsilon, we were able to find a number delta satisfying the condition of the formal definition of limits, and this means that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared equals 1. One-sided limits. Recall the definition of the floor function. Floor of x is the largest integer which is at most x. This picture shows the graph of the floor function. The floor function does not have limits at integer points. It has, 
however one-sided limits everywhere. Let us consider, for example, the point zero. As x approaches zero through positive numbers, then the floor of x is always zero and approaches hence also zero. So regardless what x is, if x is positive and less than one, the floor function takes a value zero, and therefore as x approaches zero through positive numbers, the values of the floor function also approach zero. We say that the right-handed limit of the floor function at zero is zero. Now if we approach zero through negative numbers, then when x is between negative 1 and 0, then the value of the floor function is always negative 1. And this means that the limit of the floor function as we approach 0 through negative numbers is also negative 1. And the, the, the notation for this is limit as x approaches 0 through negative numbers, floor of x is negative 1. Here we indicate that x approaches 0 through negative numbers by writing minus sign after 0. And now the floor function does not have a limit as x approaches 0 because these one-sided limits are not the same. And this is a, a general fact. If a function does have one-sided limits but the one-sided limits are not the same, at a point, then the function doesn't have a limit at that point. The formal definition of one-sided limits is the following. We say that a function f has the left-hand limit L as x approaches x0 if for all positive numbers epsilon we may find a positive number delta such that whenever 0 is less than x0 minus x is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And the notation for this is limit as x approaches x0 from the minus side, that is through numbers smaller than x0, of f of x equals l. The fact that uh, x must be less than x0 is indicated by requiring that 0 is less than x0 minus x is less than delta. Since x0 minus x must be positive, x must be less than x0. This is the definition of the left-hand limit. The definition of the right-hand limit is similar. The only change is that instead of requiring 0 less than x0 minus x less than delta, we now require that 0 less than x minus x0 less than delta. So x and x0 in this condition have changed place. So we say that a function f has the right hand limit L as x approaches x0 if for all positive numbers epsilon we can find always a positive number delta such that whenever 0 is less than x minus x0 less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And that is denoted by writing limit as x approaches x0 through numbers larger than x0, f of x equals l. Now, if one combines these two lim definitions, the left-hand limit definition and the right-hand limit definition, one gets the formal definition for limits. So immediate consequence of these definitions is that a function f has a limit at a point x0 if and only if it has one-sided limits at that point and if these one-sided limits agree. This picture shows the graph of a function, which uh, at the point where the red vertical line intersects x-axis, the function has the right-hand limit 0 and the left-hand limit plus infinity. So in general, if a function f has the plus infinity or minus infinity as a one-sided limit at some point x0, 
then it has the line x equals x0, that is the vertical red line indicated here as a vertical asymptote. This gives important information about the behavior of the function and that of its graph. Important property. If the limit of a function f at a point x0 is a positive number a, then there is a positive number delta such that whenever 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x0, less than delta, then f of x is positive. The function f may take a negative value at the point x0 itself, but near the point x0 it must take positive values if its limit at the point x0 is positive. This is indicated by this picture above. We prove this important property by using the formal definition of limits. Recall that the formal definition of limits was that limit as x approaches x0 of f of x equals l. If uh, for any positive number epsilon, we may be able to find a positive number delta such that whenever 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x0 less than delta, then the absolute value of fx minus l is less than epsilon. We use this formal definition. We had now assumed that the limit of the function f at the, the point x0 is a positive number a. And we claim that then there is a positive number delta such that whenever 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x0 less than delta, then f of x is positive. So in this formal definition of limits, we may take epsilon to be any positive number. In particular, we may take that to be the number a. a was assumed to be positive. Then it means that there is a number delta which is positive and has the property that whenever 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x0 less than delta, then the absolute value of fx minus a is less than epsilon that is less than a. a was a positive number. So if the absolute value of fx minus a is less than a, it means that the number fx lies at a distance which is less than a from the point a itself. Now, 0 lies at the distance a. And if a number is negative, then it lies at, the dis at a distance which is larger than the distance of 0 from a. And therefore, since the distance of f of x from the point a is less than a itself, it means that, that this number f of x must be positive. So we conclude that f of x is positive whenever 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x0 is less than delta. So we were able to find this delta, which is a positive number, such that whenever the distance of x from x0 is less than delta, but x is not x0, then f of x is positive. This is needed later when we study properties of functions. To summarize the discussion, recall that we have defined left-handed and right-handed limits of functions and we have observed that a function has a limit at a point x0 if and only if the left and the right-handed limits agree. Also, if a one-sided limit of a function at a point x0 is either plus infinity or minus infinity, then this function has the vertical asymptote, the line x equals x0. Important property of functions. And then we had this result which says that if a function has a positive limit at a point x0, then it takes positive values near that point x0. This is needed later.